Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video, I am just going to teach about Hertz model. So, if you remember, under standard deviation, there is two models. One is Elias model and another one is Hertz model. In the previous video, we have seen what is meant by Elias model and how to work the problems if any question has been asked under Helios model. And in this video, we are going to see how to work problems under Hertz model. So, this Hertz says that simulation technique is highly flexible tool under capital budgeting decisions that is what he means to say is simply we can use simulation technique to come with our answers it can able to evaluate the risk and uncertainty and yes so it's so simple he is talking about simulation here so if you see there is no particular sum under earth's model but we are having sums under simulation so i just combined these two together and we will be seeing the sums of the simulation here because earth's model is nothing but it states that you can go for simulation which will help you to get the better decision making ability so if you know this simulation is nothing but it is a mathematical technique and this simulation helps us to calculate the risk and uncertainty how it will be helping us to do that because it is having a range of possible outcomes and their probability so if you want to be applicable when it comes to capital budgeting technique yes simulation can be used because simulation is used in a wide range of industries wide range of projects so among that this finance project management portfolio management everything falls so instead of having a real time experiments they will be creating a model when that involves a project with lots of resources and lots of time and lots of value this simulation can be used as an alternative to know the possibilities and avoid the risk involved in the pre-production stage so yes let us see sums under simulation understand it so i know you are already been studied simulation operational research in your intermediate so i just explain the very basic concepts of simulation because we don't want to waste a lot of time here and it is a very very simple model so there is a particular format to be followed for the simulation sum so always stick on to that format so yes let us move to the question so annual net cash flow and life of project with your probability distribution or as follows they have provided the annual cash flows and the probability of the same and also they are provided with our project life on the probability of the same so the rest of the information provided in the question is the risk free rate comes to be 10 percentage and the initial investment is rupees 1 lakh 30 thousand and you all know without random number we are not going to do this simulation so the various random number generated are as follows one is for the random number for the annual cash flows provided and another one is random number of the project life is provided solution so as i said the first thing here is you should be finding your random number range table so since we are having two things to be found one is for annual cash flow another one is for the project life so what are the things to be returned value probability whatever given in your question write the same for the purpose of computing your ran random number range table so the one thing is after probability you should be finding your cumulative probability after that you will be having your range so the range is starts with 0, 0 to 99 9. so again when it comes for project life your value that is in terms of your probability or cumulative probability and finally range so yeah i'm just copying everything here so it is all provided in the question cumulative probability so at last you will be having one so that's how you will be making sure that everything is in the right place so you know the range table also it starts with 0, 0 and never ends it is kind of an exclusive it never includes the digit here that for 0 0 to 0 1 you should not take the 0 2 here whichever in the cumulative probability part is not to be taken so again i'm just writing the range so the same thing is done for the project life again copy the informations provided in your question and then find your cumulative probability with the help of the cumulative probability find your range So yes, the range comes to be 0, 0 to 0, 4 because you are not going to include the 0, 5. Okay, so that's how you are just excluding the number which is provided as the, the cumulative probability. So yeah, so now let us move on to the calculation of the net present value. So net present value is the main thing we have to find here. So by calculation of the net present value through simulation, that is we are having lots of outcomes. So with the help of the random numbers, I'm just going to evaluate that and I'm just going to find which is going to be the best outcome for me. Okay so runs 
one two ten. So yeah, random number for AC of that is annual cash flow. It has been provided the random number separately. So I've been writing this random number. So if you see this fifty three, just go back to your random number. So the first random number comes to be fifty three. Where this fifty three falls under the random number range table for annual cash flow, it falls between thirty five and sixty four range. So this thirty five and sixty four range, the value comes to be thirty. So yes, by that I just found it is thirty thousand for the random number fifty three, and similarly I will be finding the annual cash flow with respect to the top of the random number. So I am just going to get the values for each run, and these are the values. So when it comes for random number for a project life, again it is. Being provided, just write everything. So again, with the help of that random number range table, you can able to find the project life. So if it is ninety seven, your random number is ninety seven, then the project life would be nine. So similarly, if you go for the other values, and I will be having my project life. So what is our present value annuity factor? Present value annuity factor is nothing but your discount rate. So one by one. Plus zero point one zero old power nine. Why I'm just taking nine? Because your project life is nine here. So you just I'm just entering the value. Don't worry about this. I've just a working note after this slide with the help of this working note you will understand this. It is very very simple. Yeah, again cumulative percent value annuity factor. This is also with the help of the working note you can easily able to understand. So please wait for the working note in the next slide. So I'm just copying that. Out because I don't want you to confuse by going back and coming forth and making this video a mess. Uh, so here, guys, there is some mistake done. This project life is not your two. Your cumulative present value annuity factor is your two. It is by multiplying your annual cash flow and uh, cumulative present value annuity factor you will be having your present value of cash inflows. So that is your one minus two. So instead of putting two under project life, just put two and under cumulative present value of annuity. factor so by doing that you will be arriving with the following answers this you can able to find with which annual cash flow and with which year you can have a maximum net present value and also by which annual cash flow and by what project life you can get your least net present value can be found using this simulation and yes by this you will be knowing what is the better way to plan your capital budgeting so yes as i said that is the working note for these two so it will be very very simple let us see the working note is simple but i'm just going to find the present value annuity factor for 10 percentage for each year for 10 years i'm just going to find discount factor or the present value annuity factor both are same so for the 10 years so we know this part right so as i give the formula above itself so by putting the values there you, you will be arriving with these discount factor so again take cumulative for these values and yes by this you will be having your cumulative discount factor and discount factor and this can be used in the previous table to solve your sum easily so apart from this what can be asked in your examination yes there are theory questions so it is advisable to read the theory part just have an idea about each concepts it will be more enough to write in your examination because they are not going to evaluate you with by how much you are retaining from the study notes they will be evaluate waiting you by how much you are understanding the concepts so by understanding the concepts and knowing the concepts you can easily attend the theory questions so there are two kinds of questions that can be expected here one is the application of simulation so the second thing would be the advantage the advantage of simulation so yeah finally there is again one thing you they can also ask the limitation of simulation so determining net present value in simulation run risk free discount rate is used but will it give the right answer no it won't so discount rate which is carrying no risk is not going to give a reliable answer so again this is a very very important limitation because it is very much relevant to the study note that we are studying about the capital budgeting technique so yes by this we are completing our simulation very very simple topic i just didn't explain much it is about only the calculation but i just want you to know the steps here so either it is an online or offline you should know the steps so that you can work out and solve the questions and again this theory part just go and read the study note for one time or twice it is enough whatever you understand you just write it in your examination so don't mug up the things just 
try to understand it will also retain for a long time and yeah i will be closing this video now and in next video we will be seeing the other topics thank you